Today is a good day in OKC. The ballers of the big three are rolling through town. Gilbert Arenas, known to heat it up, leads title contender the enemies. Greg Oden, a force once again inside on the hardwood for the aliens. And one of the big three's breakouts, David Hawkins of Trilogy. Get him on the court. Trouble the big three on CBS. From the home of the Thunder in downtown Oklahoma City, the big three balling through the summer all summer long on CBS. Three matchups for you today. We begin with Aliens versus Ghost Ballers in game one, and then a huge matchup in game two. Trilogy has won two straight. They won the title two years ago. The enemies have won three straight. Ball Hogs try to take out Steven Jackson and the Killer Threes in matchup number three. So as we take a look at the standings in the big three, top four teams make the playoffs. So that means Ghost Ballers, Aliens, and everybody else in the big three. It is getting urgent in the summertime. With Brandon Tierney, Jim Jackson, I'm Carter Blackburn. You know this about year three of the big three. The competition level has stepped up. Which means, yes, it is important <laughs> now to make your move if yeah. you do want to have that trophy at the end of the year. It is because if you want to compete these teams in New Orleans for a playoff spot, there's only the top four teams that can advance. So this is a critical week for both of these teams, one and three, two and two, respectively, that you can make a move. But it has to start today because if not, you're not going to be in a position at the end of the year to compete in the playoffs. Let's take a look at today's rosters brought to you by State Farm. Matchup number one between the Aliens and the Ghost Ballers. You have Greg Oden, the big presence in the middle for the Aliens. Major challenge for the Ghost Ballers with the backcourt of Mike Bibby and last year's scoring champ in the league, Ricky Davis. But the big Buckeye, Greg Oden back. Talk to me, my brother. Big Greg last week, 11 points, his second straight double-double, showing the ability to dominate and say that I think that if you're the aliens, you want to go through Greg often and early, sink to defense, create opportunities for your teammates. And on the other side of the ledger, Jamario Boone, just nine points last week after coming off a 16 points before. You see his statistics right there, leads the team in six in the big three and scoring. I think it's important that he get off to a good start early because this ghost baller team has the talent around it, but someone needs to lead and it has to be more. It is a Hall of Fame coaching matchup from the D, Detroit, Michigan. George Gervin, what do you need on a hot day? The Iceman. And Nate Archbold from the Bronx to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame with an NBA championship along the way. Nate, tiny Archbold. Ghost Ballers versus Aliens to get it started. We're going to play to 50, have to win by two, half court. And of course, you see the four point shot. That'll factor in. Free throws, one shot. Immediately in Ty Brown has it stripped away so you get a look at one of those wrinkles in the rules. You get a steal, don't have to clear it, and you get an easy two for Greg Oden. And yeah, if you miss, I mean, you got Jim Jackson here, you got Greg Oden here. Can you feel the Buckeye, the Buckeye love? love. It's, it's, mean, it's all in there. You know, palpable. he may be a few years younger, but he did an outstanding job of leading at 2017 with Mike Conley and Daquan Cook to a uh, Final Four and Championship game, ultimately losing to Florida. But back to this game, Aliens, important that they start off well because they don't play well from behind. And if you can get the lead or get the ball down to Greg and establish that early, that gives you an opportunity to compete. Because once again, when this team gets behind, they struggle of getting back in the game. You see Greg Oda, deep, low position, and Jamario Moon is asking everybody, where's the help at? So if you're Jamario Moon, you're 6'8", and you're tasked with the seven-footer Greg Oden, I mean, how do you approach that obvious mismatch on the post? Well, here's the, the, the thing that you need from your teammates. Whoever is passing the ball, entering the ball into Greg Oden, you've got to put pressure on him and make sure that pass isn't as easy to get there. That'll allow Moon to kind of get the Oden off the spot. Woo. And it's four early points for Greg Oden. It's too easy in the early going for the big man in the middle. Now you always take layups. I don't care what, what form it comes in, especially when your team has struggled scoring. 
Layups are good. But this is where Jamario has the advantage right here. There's Jamario Moon. Well, we told you about Odin and Moon, and this is our matchup. All eight points in the game so far have come from Odin and Moon. And if I'm Moon, I'm taking, you know, Greg, okay, you have the advantage on the post, but I have the advantage on the perimeter, so I'm going to force you to have to come out your comfort zone and play me. Shannon Brown nearly picks it away after he... From Ricky Davis. Mike Bibby and the Ghost Ballers, they've lost their last... After a 2-0 start, and they have both been blowout losses. So 2-2, two two, season already getting late. Shannon Brown, floater goes. 8-2 start, and a hot start for the Aliens. Well, you see, Aliens have a little bit more pop, you know, a little bit more pep in their step right now, which, you know, at an early game, a lot of times, you don't have, and it's important to get off to a good start, like I talked about. It's a beautiful pass. It looks like they're exploding... Witness matchup with Jamario Moon as well. Well, use uh, Jamario in the pick and roll in a variety of places, almost like a chess piece on the court, in order to get Greg Oden moving, forcing him to have to guard laterally, which he can't do. So gets Moon. Yeah, Bibby helps with the steal, doubling down on Greg. Brandon Rush. Ricky Davis, long rebound. Outside shots not falling for either team so far. So mm. Davis scores it in a got pop. But he at least takes the two. But you know, it was a quick decision by Davis by sprinting out to the three-point line. Brandon Rush was a little bit behind, and then he went right into his move, got to his pull-up jump shot. That's a smart play that time by Pretty Ricky. Odin draws two, creates Shannon Brown. Left wide open, long two. Bibby has the board. Fourteen second shot clock, so already down to six. Ricky Davis misses. Cleared out, back into Odin, draws two, oh, Moon oh, and Bibby oh, can't oh, oh. finish. And Moon is still. <laughs> That's a significant elbow when it catches you, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. let's see. No, no, you know, it's uh, it, actually it was headbutt. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was a headbutt. Did you see the fight last night? Uh -huh. yeah, 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 you were Thurman. locked in, weren't you? Uh, yeah. yeah, little headbutts in that fight, so we got a little bit right now. And Jamario just like out of the play is like... You, you, no back, that you back away from that, that right? Yeah. It's a that's a significant headbutt as well. I'll yeah. say it's a significant elbow. It's a significant headbutt. Bibby four. But the challenge is playing three on three. It's hard to get help when you have a mismatch like this. Now that's what, what you can do right there is be more active, trying to force some steals in the post. But you just can't double team because you don't have enough. And then oh now. Foul is called, so Odin gets the foul. Thought he had another easy bucket off the steal and lay in without clearing it, but instead Odin gets a foul. I don't know about that call. <laughs> I don't really know about that one. I think, you know, it was contact there. Both guys kind of collided. I don't think either had the advantage. Beautiful move that time by Ricky Davis to slip inside. Use a little pump, jump stop, pump fake. He's a nice little layup. Ghost Ballers back in his game. Tied up. After an 8-2 start for Aliens, 6 straight for Ghost Ballers. Try to get it restarted with Odin. Drawing the D again. Moon forces a miss. So, since the double have come in the post for Greg Odin, problems now. Ghost Ballers, a chance to take the first lead. Ricky Davis. Long rebound, Greg Odin. Shannon Brown takes it at Ricky Davis. Kick out. Rush. Step in three. Brandon Rush. Moon has the board. Eyes it, thought about taking it over Odin instead. Ricky Davis, boarded again by Rush. Brown, quick trigger three. Shannon Brown puts the aliens back on top. Yeah, and that's a nice shot that time by Brown. But one thing that Coach Archibald is stressing to his team, attack off the dribble. You know, try to get inside and then if you can kick it out, think about, you know, a nice little jump shot to do that. Back-to-back -back threes after nobody had hit one yet. Well, it takes some time. Sometimes with an early game, it takes a little time to kind of get a rhythm going. Um, just because of the your travel yesterday, you get in and you made it to the city to get up and come in and warm up. So it does take some time to kind of get the juices flowing a little bit. Appears to be flowing now. Mike Taylor is going to sub in for the Ghost Ballers. He always brings the juice. 
Shannon Brown runs it down. Brandon Rush. Brown hits a three, and they are dropping now. 14-11. Aliens got off to the hot start with Odin inside. Now bombs away from outside. The big three. OKC. CBS. Greg Oden had the first six for the Aliens. Three-point lead he is with Brandon Tierney. Yeah, big advantage inside. Obviously, the game plan, go to the big fella, feed him early. How are you feeling? You got loose early on. How are you feeling so far? I'm all right. Got to keep on working. Got to make the easy ones. And by the way, fellow Buckeye Jimmy Jackson keeps saying it's early. These guys got to shake the rust. Tell the old man it's not as hard when you're a little bit younger, will you? Uh, it's still as hard. <laughs> um, I still got to take the rust off, but I'll see you over there. Uh, see? A lot of buck out that's of here, That's what you get. That's what you get, BT. Thank hey, you. Listen, that's your guy, right? <laughs> hey, now, I do have to point out the old man comment came from Brandon, not from Greg. Well, he's not looking too old right now. And what's the use and point of having a seven-footer if you're not going to utilize him? And Greg has the advantage inside with the post-up here, recipient of a tip pass. And then I talked about the fight, a little headbutt right there. Get out the way, little Bella, there's nothing you can do with me down low. All right, now uh, it's been it's been a journey, obviously, for Greg yeah. Oden. I mean, you and you have followed that journey the whole way. Yes. How much, as, as somebody who's known him a long, long time, pulled from a long, long time, how much fun is it to see Greg Oden back out there on the floor doing well? Well, it's fun because it's an unfortunate situation, and that happens throughout sports where injury can derail your career even before it gets started, and that's something that happened with Greg after he got drafted to Portland. And I say this all the time, you see Jamario Moon. Oh, beautiful Ooh, Moon. Right at the shot, offensive foul is called. Odin takes a charge. Odin takes a charge, and again, giving up his body, rotating over, not staring, staying married to the, his offensive man. This time, get his feet, his feet outside of the lane. But back to Greg, here's the thing. Greg left school early which was a blessing because I, I feel that maybe the injury would have happened if he would have stayed in school. So at least he got to secure his future by getting money while he was in Portland to, you know, to have something to lean back on because that injury with his knee was going to happen whether he was in college, I think, or another year at Ohio State. And he's been a big presence around Columbus, around the Buckeye basketball oh, program for years now. Well, I, I ultimately think he, he does want to coach. You know, whenever he, you know, he spent time at Ohio State, under Thad Mata and also last year. So um, great young man, great human being, been through some trying times through his life, but who hasn't? And, and that's part of you know what you go through and you continue to grow, but I'm happy to see him out here playing. Well, and talking with Q before the game today about, all right, you know, what, what brings you joy about this whole endeavor in the big three? And he says, seeing guys that are absolutely love the game of basketball, getting to put the sneakers on again and get back out there on the floor. He says, they're when you have that passion for the game and you can continue pursuing it, it's inspiring. Well, hoopers hoop. They want to play. I don't care if it's a gym with 10 people or nobody, just five on five, three on three. They just want to hoop. Now, combine the fact that, one, you're on national TV, you have, you know, thousands of fans watching you, you have competitors, different teams, and something to play for, that gives you that motivation to continue to play, along with just loving to play the game. Odin had the first six for the Aliens, first season of the Big Three. Lost last week versus the Enemies, who were up next. Gilbert Arenas and the Enemies. Tough floater goes Alex Scales. And a four-point bucket last week. Rush crossover, step back, long two. Boarded by Scales. Clears it. Mike Taylor running point for Ghost Ballers. Scales takes it. Rush rejects it. Yeah, great block that time. Brandon, a little upset that he missed that open three-point shot, but he didn't allow it to affect him on the defensive end, being able to move the feet. Then great timing right here to negate Scales for that shot. Greg Oden gets a break. Robert Vaden at 6-5 into the game. Tough shot. Contested two. Taylor disrupting offense, knocks it away from Shannon Brown. Mike Taylor from Chicago. Brown tries the three. Long rebound scales. Taylor clears it, 
gets a screen from Davis, mm. buries it too. Mike Taylor, quick trigger. Well, you know, between Taylor, Bibby, and Jamario Moon, those guys can put up points in a second along with Ricky Davis, of course. But, you know, he, he gives you a spark coming in right away. And speaking about a spark, Shannon Brown still looking at it. Got a four-point play, four-point shot right there. Big four and the big three from Shannon Brown. Offensive rebound for Scales. And then Scales with a left off the bounce. Yeah, Alex is tricky, quick, long, athletic. You Known Alex for several years, and good to see him out here competing as well. Six early from Greg Oden. Shannon Brown now has 14 after the four-point shot. Rush took a pop, play on. Mike Taylor does. Can't answer with the four. So back into the hands of Shannon Brown. Baden straight away. Sometimes you just got to line it up, get your legs up underneath you, feel good about it. Mike Taylor wasn't coming out too far, so Shannon Brown was like, okay, I'll take this four points. Give him 14 in the game. Wipe out the ball. Shannon Brown out of Michigan State. So with Odin on the bench, more of a perimeter game for the Aliens. Taylor off the bounce, good screen mm. from Davis. Yeah, but I like that play because Mike Taylor, his quickness, you can see the explosion right off the screen. And once he gets his shoulders around the corner, it's tough to get him because he gets so low to the ground that the defender really is at a disadvantage that thus picking up a foul. Taylor out of the horn set. He ain't bad for either. Yeah. <laughs> he thought he was Listen, following his miss, and then he I'm goes sure in. I'm sure George told him one thing. When you come in, look for your shot. So, you know, so obviously that's what's... <laughs> you're telling me Mike Taylor's not bad, so I mean, you could just see the energy uh, on the floor, on the court, on the bench. Yep. No matter where Mike Taylor is, it is energy. Well, that's, you know, that's something you need, especially when you, you've been struggling the last few games. A guy that can give you, look at the hustle right here. <laughs> on the floor going for the offensive rebound. Baden, that's oh. an offensive foul. Charge taken by Ricky Davis. Well, let's see if, if, let's see if Davis was outside of the circle, he is. So, again, an excellent play that time by Ricky Davis by rotating over, absorbing the contact, and taking the charge. Scales triple. Davis, easy stick back, Ghost Ballers back on top. An easy two, and again, don't have to clear. I mean, you go pull up. Now Brown, I like 16 it. now for Brown. No, I like it. You know, he's taking what the defense is giving him, and right there was an easy 15-foot pull up right at the free throw line. Smart play. Taylor off the bounce, takes a <laughs> bump, and earns a trip. Chasing around Mike Taylor around the floor. That was tough. It's, it, it's tough. I mean, it's hard to keep Mike in front of you because he does an excellent job a lot of times, Carter, of catching the ball on the move. So now the defender is much more of a disadvantage that time because you're playing basically on the side or from behind trying to catch up with the quicker Mike Taylor. Hollins is coming back in. And speaking of energy, Ryan Hollins is going to bring it on the floor and off. When we're UCLA Bruin. Good screen from Davis for Taylor. Couldn't take advantage. Shannon Brown has the board. Poked away by Taylor. <laughs> Mike is everywhere. Offensively, defensively. Play through Andre Owens now. Owens in the paint on scales. Kick out. Brown. He was thinking about a four-point shot. Taylor closes out. Take the two. At the halftime break at 25, so Scales triple, Hollins has the board, Brown wants it back. Hollins in the post, Ryan Hollins taken away by Scales, doesn't have to clear. Davis, can he hang on? Back into the hands of Taylor. Who wants it? No reset, five to shoot. Taylor on Shannon Brown, Taylor off the bounce, in tight. 
Great D that time by Shannon Brown. I think he got hit a little bit too. Grabbing his chest. Owens triple, 25 on the board for the Aliens. That sends us to the half. Odin early, then Shannon Brown with 16. And now Andre Owens off the bench, 25 on the board for the Aliens. Nothing falling early. Jim told you, it's sometimes cold to get it started. And now it's starting to warm up at OKC. Owens hits the three. Brandon is with the Iceman. Ah, the Iceman. Love him. All right, Ice. Big advantage inside height-wise for Greg Oden to start. Moon was banging, tried his best. Oden got loose, and then you guys kind of contained him. What'd you change? Well, we double team. They're not real good passes out of the double team. So we got a double team because they're so much bigger than us. We got to put them in a pick and roll situation. Lila really, they can't move. That's to our advantage. We real quick, we can shoot the basketball, and I think that's going to be our advantage. All in all, you're pretty good where you are right now? Yeah, I'm not bad at all. Nice, appreciate it. Back to you guys. Ghost Ballers. Big one for them at two and two. Trying to be in the top four, make the playoffs a title hunt. Greg Oden and the Aliens have their eyes on the prize as well. We'll return to Oklahoma City after these messages. Big Three Basketball on CBS Sports is sponsored by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. VH1 Basketball Wives, new season, check your local listing. And by Toyota, let's go places. Bricktown, downtown Oklahoma City. Some call it the big friendly. 8-2 run to start for the Aliens. The first 22 points came from Greg Oden and Shannon Brown. The three-point shots are starting to fall. Ghost Ballers only 1-4-8 from three-point. With Brandon Tierney, Jim Jackson, Carter Blackburn, I think when you have uh, 22 straight points from two guys, that's pretty clear uh, how things have gone so far for the Aliens. Well, but, but it was important because I talked about it at the top of the show, the Aliens struggle when they play from behind. So what you want to do, you want to be more aggressive, you want to get the lead going in the halftime, feel good about yourself. So Greg Oden, Shannon Brown, set the table for what we may see in the second half as far as those two being the most aggressive on the Aliens team. A red-hot start versus the Iceman's Ghost Ballers, that is, Shannon Brown. After Odin had the first six, then Shannon Brown took over. Well, I, I love the fact that Shannon, you know, kind of displayed a variety of shots, whether it's a four-point shot, the pull-up jump shot, the ability to get to the basket. That makes it tougher to guard because now defenses can't pin you down. You're beating him from different areas on the court. Let's see if that trend can continue in the second half. All right, you heard the Iceman uh, tell Brandon Tierney. Felt pretty good about where they were the, as the Ghost Ballers and how they dealt with that matchup inside with Greg Oden. Thought their quickness was going to be their advantage. And we know that this is a critical one if the Ghost Ballers are going to get in the playoffs, contend for a title in the Big Three. So this is a very critical second half of the Ghost Ballers at 2-2, two and two, down by three. Well, it is. And Coach Archibald chose to start Ryan Hollins in the second half instead of Oden. So let's see how that plays off because you really don't have to double team as much with Hollins as you do or would do with Greg Oden. Andre Owens clears it. He's the only other player to score for the Aliens other than Oden and Shannon Brown. Rush in the corner, miss three. Bibby and a takedown. Hollins and Bibby get tangled up. And Hollins hits the deck. Well, that's one way to keep Brian Hollins who has the size advantage of not getting the rebound and right here the bulked up Mike Bibby arm locks a little UFC takedown and our officiating crew will have a look at this one as Hollins and Bibby get tangled up more than tangled yeah and you can understand why Ryan Hollins not very happy about that Mike Bibby's not backing down cooler heads prevailing as of now and they make oh. <laughs> Yeah, not a play on the ball right there. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> At all. Hey Jim, At that all. is that, that is that, that, spot that is, on listen, analysis. That, that is analysis that you only get right here. No, that Big is very good. That, that, that's all you get. That the that the 
that the double <laughs> forearm grab pull down uh toss yeah. is uh yeah it's not a play on the ball At that's all. good man that's At that's all. good Jim. it took me years to kind of get to this point in my that career bro is ace <laughs> so our officiating crew led by brent stanford our crew chief has a look and we'll see if there's anything further coming here from mike bibby as of now common foul Well, let's just keep an eye, too, because it's going to be a situation where those who get switched and have to guard each other. So since the tempers flared up a little bit, that's something to kind of keep our eye on. So as you look, uh, flagrant one. So as taking a look at the big three rule book on page 20, you have section six, flagrant one. Opponent is awarded one free throw shot for two points and possession. If foul is considered flagrant two, a player is ejected plus a five. So flagrant one is the call there yeah. on Mike Bibby. Bibby and Hollins both still on the floor. Play it out. And Aliens have now a six-point event. That's a big that's a big play. That's a big play. Rush attacks. See, that's you, an even better is one. Is it even better? Now you come back and score. But I'm going to go back to you. You know, you are real meticulous because you actually sit on page 20. That's exactly right. Of the rule book. You just didn't give us the rule. You specify hey. where you can find it if you want to look it hey, up. Hey, you got the analysis of the takedown is not a basketball play. I got the rule. Flagrant one. We're on top of things got you. here. Got you. All on it. And, and, and if it gets to flagrant, <laughs> if it gets to flagrant two, Brandon's going to be in the thick of it. I guarantee our big three's got it covered here on the big three. Yeah, get back to the game, and how about the move right now by Brandon Rush? And this is the kind of start you want in the second half if you're Coach Nate Archibald. You had momentum going into halftime. You had the lead. A lot of times you can let that kind of slide away by not paying attention to the details. But in this second half, it's all been about the aliens to start. And again, with Odin on the bench to begin this second half. So we had the first six of the game establishing the presence inside for the aliens. Now it's Hollins banging, Owens on mm. the bounce with the finger roll. I think Mr. Gervin would appreciate that, even though it's coming from the well, other yeah. side. He may like the fact that you know, Ricky Davis got beat off the dribble and there wasn't there weren't any support to kind of take away that easy layup. And now Moon hangs a foul on Ryan Hollins, attacking off the bounce, extending to a 10-point lead now for the Aliens. Those ballers just have to figure it out. Now, one thing that Coach, if we go back to this replay real quick on Andre Owens, no help. But one thing Coach Gerben talked about was that he wanted his team to use their quickness and drive the ball. We haven't seen that yet, okay? And, and that being two, a couple things happen. One, you can get layups. Two, you draw the defense and create a play. But three, you pick up fouls. That allows you to get into the penalty early, which once you're in the penalty, now you make the free throw, you retain possession. So no foul outs when you talk about personal fouls. It's just sitting for first half or potentially second half, but bonus plays in strategy-wise. Owens exactly. couldn't finish after a nice move. No, he couldn't. I mean, to me, it's all about trying to get to the bonus as soon as you can. Taylor takes it in on Owens. Bounce. And a foul call. That was a tight one. Owens what? and Taylor doing battle. But it was a good I mean, Owens initially had Taylor locked up, but then he pushes him right there at the end. So... It's an obvious call for the Fisher. I know that Owens doesn't like the call, but if he would have maintained his position, Taylor was already kind of pinned behind the backboard and really didn't have a shot. Moon. Tough two. Aliens doing with defense as well. That did not hit the rim. No reason to clear. Rush has the dunk. Aliens back up by double digits. And it's funny that Ryan Hollins didn't realize that. He kind of gave it up to Rush. So luckily, they were still able to capitalize off that. Moon misses the three. Owens seems like Ghost Baller settling for jump yep. shots right now. Now, Rush doesn't do him many favors there. No, I was going to say the same thing. You talk about the strategy that Coach Gervin wanted to employ, <laughs> and that's the strategy. That's... Just don't let him get the shot up. And Ricky Davis is upset. He felt they got hit with an elbow last time by Ryan Hollins and didn't get called. So that time, he wasn't going to give Ryan a chance. 
Well, the ghost ballers uh, say this about Ryan Hollins. He has drawn some hard fouls from the ghost ballers. And when your team's up by double digits, whatever you're doing is actually helping your team at this point. So Hollins and Bibby get mixed up earlier. Now it's Hollins and Ricky Davis getting physical. And Andre Owen says, let's just get back to playing ball. A 15 to You're 4 following. run. Here You're comes. Following. I told you. There you go. I told you. I knew it was coming. It was, it was so obvious that as soon as Ryan Hollins touched the ball down low, he was going to have a mismatch. They weren't going to allow him to get the shot up. And right here, kind of bullies his way, which he's supposed to do. Down low, and Ricky Davis smartly doesn't allow Ryan Hollins to get that shot up. I'll say this, Jim Jackson. You were a student of uh, not only the game, but of human nature. Oh, big because time, if man. you think you got robbed on one, you're going to get it back, right? Yeah. You're going to make your presence known. No doubt. You know, because the emotions play into what we do as basketball players like anything else. And sometimes that emotion will take over where your venting may be a foul like that, okay? But now you have to kind of get yourself back involved in the game mentally because if you're the ghost ballers, you're allowing that aggression to hurt you right now. Ricky Davis gets the T. Aliens by 12 now. It is a hot in OKC, and it is getting hotter. See why everyone's talking about Love Island as sexy singles compete. Play and romance the summer away. Monday through Friday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. And a perfect transition to bring in Brandon Tierney with no love lost love right now Island. on the floor. I love it, boys. This is one of the reasons I love the big three. A little chippiness, right? I mean, you play three on three in the schoolyard, things are going to, tempers are going to flare. But I was watching Nate Tiny Archibald during the huddle, and he was telling Ryan Hollins, actually imploring Ryan Hollins, hey, Ryan, when you pivot, when you turn, elbows up. Nice move right there. Elbows up. And if you graze somebody, so be it. It's the way it is. Well, you know, Tiny is old school. So <laughs> back in the day, centers and forwards were taught that when you get up, your elbows stay out. Now, uh -huh. if you do it, it could be a flagrant foul. But here, that's just old school basketball. Hey, Jimmy, if your face is in the way, that's your problem. That's your problem. That's right. You better know it's coming. And this is the play that the aliens won. He did. Alex Scales did get away with a double dribble right there. But unfortunately, the officials didn't see it. Yeah, you talk about Nate Tiny Archibald from the Bronx. Uh -huh. I mean, it, you know, clearing out with elbows, that's part of the game. Big part. And now Taylor off the bounce, attacking. Ghost Ballers need something to happen in a hurry. Playing to 50, you have to win by two. Ghost Ballers in contention for top four spot in the playoffs, a chance at a championship. Well, you see Ricky Davis right there talking to Taylor and what he was telling him is that you can't do it by yourself that time you had to dribble drive but the defense came and there was a teammate open in the corner just kick it so basically what he said we can't do it by ourselves we, we want to get back in this game collectively we have to do it together offensively and defensively and now Jim you go back to what you talk about with the I mean with the aliens trying to close it out because that has not been a strength for this aliens team one of the reasons they're one and three not letting the ghost ballers get back in this game Hollins will help Elbows flying, ball goes in the hoop. But it's called smart basketball. You see, the tendency is when you get up big, now you just you know start taking shots. You don't defend, and right there, Hollins is right there. Again, do the little things that got you to lead. Continue to do those little things. That was a victory. Ricky Davis, long two, boarded Taylor, foul called. Well, Ryan Hollins has been a presence in the middle for the Aliens. We've talked so much about Greg Oden and with good reason Odin got him off to the 6-0 start hot start and Shannon Brown had the next 16 but the second half it has been Ryan Hollins both offensively and defensively the presence in the middle we'll see if Odin maybe helps close it out right now Brandon Rush subs out Andre Owens back in Nine points from Moon to lead Ghost Ballers, and now Davis has ten. First Ghost Baller in double digits. Game to 50, have to win by two. Aliens closing in. 
First season in the big three. Late push. Round two. Owens, offensive rebound. What an offensive board over Mike Taylor to get a quick two for the Aliens. But those are kind of plays that just win your game. I mean, Andre Owens wanted it a little bit more than Taylor. Beautiful shot by Alex Gales, but he's able to go over the back. He was a little contact, but not enough by the officials to call a foul. And then Owens found himself with an easy layup. So Owens on scales again, crossing over, creating. Hollins, baseline Jay. Owens thought about another offensive board, and now Davis takes a tumble. You see, that's the kind of plays that win your game. I, Hollins missed the shot, okay, but Owens did the correct thing. He drove the ball, he attracted the defense. Hollins stepped into his comfort zone and got a shot. Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but that was the correct play. Hollins subs out, Rush back in. Smaller lineup on the floor for the Aliens without their two big men. Rush clears it. Owens ISO on scales. They like this matchup. Four to shoot. Owens spins. Owens in tight foul. Call. Called on scales with one on the shot clock. Well, you said you liked the matchup that time. That's one of Owens' favorite moves. A kind of little shake to the right. Shift the defense and then attack. Well, shake, shake to the left and then attack to the right. And that time, able to get inside again. He picked up the foul. Was a little bit late, but he got himself to the free throw line. And Owens is a bit of a breakout. He's... But in single digit scoring until this. Double digits now for Owens. Davis, floater. Aliens closing in, five points away from the win. Desperation time, Mike Taylor hustling all the way to the Aliens bench. Ghost Ballers started 2 0 this year. They've lost. The last two in blowout fashion, and now with that three for the Aliens, two points away from sending the Ghost Ballers to their third straight loss. Scales behind the screen from Davis, launches a three, much needed for the Ghost Ballers. Yeah, much needed, but you have to get stops, and, and you talked about the two losses, just as winning is contagious, so is losing, and losing in a big way. That's something that we see have seen the last few weeks with Ghost Ball is really not in games competing. Rush crosses over Davis, tripled away! Brandon Rush, shakedown street game winner! Crossing over, Tiny loves it! And the OKC fans get a show at the end. What a way to win it for the Aliens. Brandon Ross crosses over and drills it to end it. Game one. Well, back in the day, back in the neighborhood, we used to always tell guys, if you reach, I teach. And right there, Brandon Rush taught Ricky Davis, Davis, don't do that again, I'll make you pay. But the thing I love about the aliens in this game that they can bottle this up. This one thing is how they start. They started inside out with Greg Oden drawing a lot of attention and they got layup. That opened up everything else for them now to get into rhythm offensively. And the second part of it, when they had the lead at halftime, they came out with more energy, more aggressive in the second half, maintained that, able to walk out of here with a much needed W. Tiny loves it. A walk-off winner. Rock shot for Brandon Rush. Let's take a look at the TGI Friday's player of the game. Shannon Brown was huge when the Aliens needed it. It was the start for Greg Oden. And then Shannon Brown gets on a tear. And Shannon Brown, our TGI Friday's player of the game, is with Brandon Tierney. Yeah, guys, I had to lace up my sneaker. Shannon took off. I had to go catch him as he was basically halfway in the locker room. Pretty chippy game, man. You know, we, we had fun, man. Uh should be, you know, better than what it is. We, we gave a couple games away. You know, we knew what we did to lose those games, so we tried to come out and uh, prepare ourselves to go out and have a dog fight, and that's what we did. Yeah, you reference, obviously, you guys are in a whole standings-wise standings -wise coming into the season. So how do you reconcile, you know, not looking too far ahead, being immersed in the moment, and obviously trying to make something of the season? Uh, just taking it one game at a time. You know, we do a good job of watching film and recognizing where, you know, we came up short in the winning. And, um, you know, a lot of times we wasn't rebounding the ball. We wasn't taking good shots. So we tried to correct that. We tried to uh, get the mismatches, and we ended up 
up getting a wheel, we knocked down some shots to play hard. Yeah, no doubt. You had 14. Ryan Holland's always this chippy? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, he is. You know what I mean? But uh, I think, you know, the, the ghost ballers was down a little bit, and they tried to, you know, get us out of our game, but we did a great job of holding our composure. Congrats on the win. Thanks. You got it, my man. Shannon, guys, back to you. Good stuff. A 31-14 to 14 run for the Aliens to come from behind against the ghost ballers. Game one is done. Rock Chalk game winner, Brandon Rush. The game can be rough on skin. Rehydrate and strengthen your skin to bounce back and rebound strong. New Doveman Plus Care Sport Care rehydrates and strengthens skin. ISO Joe is basically asking the whole league, who gonna stop me? And Deshaun Stevenson just can't wait to answer the challenge.